Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 3rd, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to provide an Arctic climate and sea ice update for you. And we don't have a lot of time and we've got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. Now, what we're looking at here is an Arctic sea ice concentration map produced by the University of Bremen. And what we see is, is, is a greatly reduced sea ice coverage from past weeks. And sea ice that is, is rapidly thinning and, and rapidly melting. And there are a number of reasons why that's happening. But before I get into that, let's let's talk a bit about sea ice extent. Now, according to the National Snow and Ice Data Center, Arctic sea ice extent is about the third lowest on record for the date. And I'm going to go ahead and take out a couple of measures here. So, so this measure is the 2018 measure for August 2nd showing 6.582 million square kilometers of sea ice in the Arctic Ocean at present. And this is just slightly above the 2012 line, which is showing approximately, let's see, let's get to August, August 2nd here, there we go, approximately 200,000 square kilometers less sea ice for the date, so not too much difference, uh, approximately 250,000 square kilometers separating the two. Now, adding in 2017, we find that 2017 is not quite as low as 2018 for the date. And the only other year in which sea ice for the date was slightly lower was during 2007. So it looks like 2017, according to NSIDC, was the third lowest on record. And in the JAXA record, Arctic sea ice extent is tracking at between fourth and fifth lowest on record. So these are much closer to, to record lows for the date. Now, looking at the satellite shot, we can see quite a bit going on in the Arctic at present. I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can see all the wildfires that are burning around in the near Arctic re region. And zooming back in, we can see large plumes of smoke issuing up from the wildfires burning in, the, in Siberia. But if you look closely, you'll note there are a lot of storms that are circling the Arctic edge zone at present. And this is due to a high pressure system that has taken hold in the central Arctic. And when you have a high pressure system in the central Arctic, it tends to push the storms out into the edge zone. And that's what we're seeing in these edge zone fire, I'm sorry, edge zone storms will tend to help suppress wildfire activity as long as this pattern continues. Now for various regions, the Chukchi Sea and adjacent Beaufort Sea, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom here so you can take a look. It is showing rapid sea ice loss and, and dispersal with a large segment of ice which has been stranded away from the main ice pack and the ice edge over here in the Beaufort rapidly reducing. We also have rapid melt in the Canadian archipelago and it doesn't look like there's any ice of note left in either Baffin or Hudson Bay with the Naras Strait also rapidly melting as well. The edge zone adjacent to the North Atlantic and the Barents Sea is much reduced and, and this in part due to warmth that continues to spill up from a ridge zone in Europe. And near Kara Sea is much reduced as is the Laptev Sea region. Contiguous ice in the central Arctic does appear to be holding together relatively well, especially as we get closer to Greenland. But the near polar zone is starting to show some fragmentation and you can see some polynias opening up in the near polar zone as we zoom in closer. So 
sea ice much reduced. Now, I want to look at sea surface temperature anomalies, and we're going to go ahead and flip to this map provided by DMI, and we're going to look at sea surface temperature anomalies. So, as you can see, the Laptev Sea is much warmer than normal. The Chukchi Sea is much warmer than normal. There's a warm pool on the edge zone of the Beaufort, but the Beaufort is still not quite as warm. And you've got quite a lot of much warmer than normal temperatures here in the Barents Sea. Now, if you get strong winds running off of any of these warm zones, the warm water pools can contact the ice and cause more rapid melt. Now, I mentioned before that we're seeing a high-pressure system getting into the Central Arctic, and this, this does have an effect on Arctic sea ice in that the clockwise circulation of a high-pressure center tends to draw the ice together and cause it to compact, and this has an added melt forcing in summer. A, a lot uh, over much of June and, and July, we saw low pressure systems in the central arctic and that tended to help to spread out the ice but with the ice being so weakened this spreading didn't really protect the ice as much as we expected and so we've seen rapid melt over recent days now this insurgence of high pressure is adding to a, a heightened melt tendency so so it's, it's a melt signal so something to watch over the coming days. And I want to add that with a high pressure system in the central Arctic, it also tends to increase temperatures in the high Arctic. Now temperatures in the high Arctic have ranged from like near average to slightly below average because we've had storms in the Arctic. But with this high pressure system running into the central Arctic, we were starting to see temperatures slightly exceed the average value for this time of year. Now even small accessions in average value for the high Arctic can, can be a bit of concern, so we want to watch this. Now looking at surface temperature forecasts, it appears that the Arctic Ocean region is going to experience warmer than normal temperatures, particularly in the high Arctic through the period, and that the Arctic overall will remain slightly above average to, to above average according to this GFS model forecast. And I'm just going to go ahead and advance this for you so you can see where the heat is coming from. So we see heat coming in off of this much warmer than normal sea surface region in the Laptev and the ridge zone running up through Siberia. We also see warmth coming in from Europe, which is experiencing extreme heat and running up through the Barents Sea and into the high Arctic. And so we can, we can see this heat, these heat plumes continuing to run up from these two ridge zones. The North American ridge zone appears to be suppressed along the edge of Alaska, so we're not seeing a heat contribution from that region at this at this time in the forecast. But these other two zones are, are quite energetic, and it does show that the high Arctic is expected to experience warmer than normal temperatures over the Arctic Ocean over the coming 10 days, with average Arctic temperatures peaking out in the warmest period to about one degree Celsius above average, above the climatological average. And that's that's rather warm for summer, so, th so that's a concern. So something that we want to look at as we go forward is what's the impact to this edge ice near Savalbard, the edge ice near the Laptev and the Karasis, and the central Arctic ice as this warmth settles in. And in addition, what happens to just the general edge zone as high pressures tend to maintain over the high Arctic and help to compact the ice more, drawing this edge zone away from the fragmented ice in the Beaufort Sea. So something to look forward to. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.